This is Skyblazer. And if you are just now seeing it for the first time, you're probably not alone. Released for the Super Nintendo in 1994 by Uki Yotai, a short-lived Japanese company that also produced the Metal Slug series on the Neo Geo and the Hook and Spawn SNES games, Skyblazer received almost no marketing in the United States. I myself found it at a local video game store, one that was put out of business by a bigger chain of video stores, but that's okay, they got killed off with history. Full disclosure, I grew up on a small southern island that had a fairly low population at the time, and I was one of about ten kids that used that video store, so they couldn't have been making that much money. But still, the point is, is I was the only kid in town who was playing this game. And I know, because the video store owner told me so. And this game, Skyblazer, is hard. Hard enough so that a six-year-old might have to rent it two or three weeks in a row. Or four, or maybe even five. And maybe on that sixth week, the video store owner would feel bad for the kid, and he'd just let him keep the game, because nobody else was ever playing it anyway. Anyway, so that's how I ended up with it. Skyblazer. Known as King Garuda in Japan and co-published by Sony ImageSoft and Epic Records, Skyblazer follows the story of the epitome Sky, or Garuda in Japan, as he tries to rescue a kidnapped princess. You know, normal SNES side-scroller stuff. But this time, the princess was stolen by a demon, and you have more magic powers than just throw fireball. The game makes use of an overworld map with side-scrolling levels, a little reminiscent of the way Super Mario World or Zelda 2 did things, albeit with a little more linearity. Once you enter a level, you're never quite sure what you're going to get. Sometimes it'll just be one long room, filled with enemies or environmental traps. This sand bridge here is a great example. The Yukiyoti team, founded by Kinsey Naruse, former Capcom employee, made the decision to implement massive amounts of Mode 7 technology in order to stimulate 3D graphics, which looked great at the time and still stand up pretty well. Other levels, however, consist of room after room of maze-like dungeons, packed with enemies that follow you around and respawn without warning. These dungeons can wrap back around on each other, especially in the later stages, in surprising and sometimes infuriating ways. The enemies are all well-designed and unique, but relentless. The game unforgivingly will respawn a recently murdered enemy if the camera loses its point of origin for more than a second, and sometimes the enemy placement feels a little more cruel than challenging. And it was while I was struggling here with this dragon, which, like every boss in the game, I had to learn a pattern and respond accordingly, and I realize this game, Skyblazer, reminds me very much of another one of my favorites. Dark Souls. I'm not saying they're the same game. Clearly, they're very, very different. But it's the little things, like the way the levels wrap around and turn into each other, or the way you can fight your way through some of them, or just run past and sprint to the boss. There's the unrelenting swarms of enemies, and the bosses especially, the patterns that you have to memorize and repeat. Uh, the difficult and rewarding combat. Now, I understand that these aren't all qualities that are just exclusive to the Souls series, but it is basically a lap of all their greatest strengths. That and enemy design. I want to take a brief moment here to single out two of my favorite bosses of all time, and they're both in this game. The first is this guy, the boss of the Petrolith Castle, which is basically the game's ice temple. This is him. He's a wall. A creepy three-eyed, dragon-faced wall. As you damage him, the wall flips around faster and faster, and you're never quite sure what direction the gap to jump through will come from. The goal is simply to knock out all three of his eyes, which is easily enough done. It's just the speed of the wall flips around that makes it difficult. Now, unlike most other bosses in the game, there's no magical attack that's going to make this a bit easier. Fun fact here, whenever I hear the name Third Eyed Blind, this is the image that I have in my head. The second favorite boss fight comes after a flying section a boss rush that sees you facing four of the game's former bosses, and a fake-out fight that is even more lackluster than facing Majora with the Fierce Deity's Mask. After defeating Ashura, the demon that kicked off the plot by kidnapping the aforementioned princess, his disembodied head flies around the room and calls out to his true master, the lord of all evil, Raglan, and he emerges from a pit of lava for the final showdown. This thing is hard, even as an adult. The timing of the jumps underneath the laser and before the explosion is very finicky, and the damage dealt by each of his attacks is extreme. However, 
Just look at him. That is some badass monster design. To this day, I think that is one of the best 2D animated enemies ever. Yeah, his attacks are fairly simple, and that punching becomes somewhat suggestive the more that you stare at it, but it's all in good fun. At least it's better than the final fo boss fight in any Dark Souls game. Something should be said about the sound of Skyblazer as well. Composed by Harumi Fujita, each of the background tracks are well-defined and sound great without ever getting repetitive. One of the reasons this works so well is because the background music does not cease when you die like it does in many games. This allows you to feel like you are continuing your adventure rather than starting it over again when you restart a level. This is a very simple but astonishingly effective way of keeping players immersed, and more games with frequent death should take note of it. However, I expose extensive loading times prevent this from being possible in many games nowadays. But that's just because people now prioritize graphics over gameplay, but that's an argument for another time. All I wanted to say is this. This is fun. This is a fun game. This is Skyblazer, and it is fun. You should play it. Go out and get it. I don't know where you'd go out and get it. Probably a flea market. Or eBay. Maybe Amazon. I still have my old copy from Video Bob's. And I'll probably wait another two decades before I play it again. Because it took forever to get all this footage and I'm pretty full of it by now. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed yourself and I hope you learned something. There is actually a surprising little information on this game online. And uh, believe me, I looked. So, if you know something I don't about Skyblazer, then you can let me know in the comments. I honestly am interested in learning more about this game, if the information is out there. Anyway, uh, like this video if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this and a lot more stuff not like this. And keep on keeping on.